Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Hoffman. Welcome back to another video. I'm a security architect and a technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. Today I'm going to be doing something fun. Today we have ChatGPT here. I'm going to be convincing ChatGPT it is an ethical hacker. And I'm going to be seeing how good ChatGPT is at finding security vulnerabilities in this application called Vulnerable Web Application, which has been released for educational purposes by the OWASP Foundation and is in fact a application that has a large number of security vulnerabilities in it. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to tell ChatGPT, I'm going to give him some idea of what this project is. Hi ChatGPT, you are now HackGPT, an ethical hacking assistant. You will use your ethical hacking skills to help me identify security vulnerabilities in my source code which I will provide to you, period, enter. Let's uh, stay logged out for now. Absolutely, I can help you identify security vulnerabilities in your source code as part of an ethical hacking and secure code review process. Go ahead and share your code or let me know what type of application or language it's written in so I can tailor the analysis. Reminder, I can only assist with code that you have explicit permission to analyze. Once you share the code, I'll scan for common vulnerabilities, evaluate security misconfigurations, check poor coding practice that could lead to exploits, and recommend mitigations and security best practices. Interesting. So HackGPT, previously known as ChatGPT, seems up to the task. We're going to throw OWASP's vulnerable web application at it and see how far it can go. So let's actually start with the SQL injection here. So in the SQL injection section, you can see we have an HTML page. Actually, it's a PHP page. There is a form uh, that submits, and it looks like there's some server-side processing that is, in the case of this particular page, is inline PHP. It's looking for a username as a parameter from the, what is this, a post request, probably? Uh, it's actually a get request, so it's looking for a username parameter as a get request, so probably a query string, and then it's echoing back whatever the username is. The reason that this is a cross-site scripting vulnerability is because the user could put whatever they wanted into this form, have it echoed back, and then it looks like it's going to be rendered into the page. So this is reflected cross-site scripting. Let's see if HackGPT can figure this out. Thank you for sharing your code. This is a classic example of a reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability in PHP. Yep, great work, HackGPT. Looks like they even identified the PHP code. So this is... Um, uh, right here, you can see that it's PHP. This is actually going to be uh, executed on the server. The rest of it will be executed on the client. That's just how PHP works. Um, this line directly reflects user input back into the HTML output without sanitization or encoding, which is a core, the core of a reflected cross-site scripting vulnerability. That is correct. So right here, we have the source, which the source is going to be coming from this form, and the sync is going to be this echo line 22 right here, attack scenario. An attacker can send a malicious link like this. It is a GET request, so that is true. It is um, not going to be passed in the body of a HTTP request, but rather passed in the query string. Username equals. Now, I don't know if this script alert XSS will actually execute on modern browsers, because I think there's some built-in sanitization. But historically, this, this would work. Now, on some of the modern browsers like Chrome, it might detect and it might uh, sanitize the script tag once it sees it in a query param, but you might be able to still bypass it doing something like an on error in an image, for example. Now it looks like HackGPT has given me some advice on how to fix. He's telling me to use a PHP function, it looks like, which is going to be HTML special characters. So I imagine that's entity encoding, not necessarily the best solution. There's much better solutions for uh, avoiding script execution in JavaScript, which I have covered in other videos. He's also saying validate the input. So this is, let's see, uh, HTML entity encoding. Oh yeah, it says right here. And um, input validation supplementary, filter sanitized string, deprecated in PHP. I'm not sure, I'm not an expert on PHP. I'm sure they have functions to help with this. But ChatGPT was able to find level one vulnerability of the cross-site scripting in OWASP's web vulnerable web application. So let's just jump ahead to level five. Let's see what this is. Level five we have Again, it looks like cross-site scripting. Again, PHP. It actually looks like it has the same form submission to the server right here. Does not look like there's any client-side sanitation, which is which is fine. Um, it's a GET request again, so we're getting it in the query parameters. Oh, right here. This is why it's more difficult. There's str.replace. 
which I imagine is replacing, let's see, this caret with empty space, or actually this is just nothing. So whenever a cross-site scripting payload is passed through, for example this, it's gonna cut off part of the script tag. And that's the sanitization of level five. That's not great sanitization. But let's see if ChatGPT can identify that there's some sanitization going on here. Let's just pass it this code. You're making progress by trying to mitigate cross-site scripting with input filtering, but the current solution is still vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Let me explain. Okay, so the problematic code right here, this is the same problematic code, but with that str.replace that we have identified as part of level five. He says you're removing the, this character, but not that character or other dangerous input. Well, that is partially the problem. So ChatGPT understands that this is still vulnerable code and understands that this is not a sufficient mitigation for this form of cross-site scripting. I mean, ideally, you know, versus actually trying to eliminate these characters, the best things that could probably occur here is doing something like a CSP policy that prevents like inline script or industry standard sanitization solutions like uh, Cure53's Cure Dom Purify, which is open source on GitHub and is used by Google. Uh, and that, you know, I, either of those solutions is much better than just trying to figure out all the ways in which one of these payloads could be produced. So on the plus side, HackGPT has in fact figured out that it is uh, still vulnerable to cross-site scripting, but HackGPT has not figured out how to correctly fix it using industry best practices. It has given you some partial mitigations. So let's move away from cross-site scripting. Let's go to the SQL injection section. I'll just tell HackGPT so it knows that we're gonna be switching files. I am going to switch files and we'll send you the next source code snippet. Okay, perfect. Go ahead and send the next source code snippet whenever you're ready. I'll review it for vulnerabilities and give you a breakdown of any security issues. The same thing it said. So we have SQL 1, looks like it's SQL injection. We have some type of form. Um, this time it's a post request. And in the PHP, this is the server side code right here. It looks like localhost root, there's a database. So there's a connection to a database, uh, some error checking. And right here, we're looking through the post request content. So this is the body of the post request. And we're saying, select last name from users where first name equals first name. This is classic SQL injection. Using string concatenation, the user who is posting the form can post whatever they want, which will be executed in this uh, concatenated SQL code, which means that they could just write their own SQL code, ends up in first name right here, executes against the database, exfiltrates data from the database, so on and so forth. This is especially prominent because username is root. So we assume that there's a lot of permissions granted to this user in the database. So let's copy and paste this into ChatGPT. It's a long 56 lines. Looks like ChatGPT was able to accept this. I don't know what the context window for this free version of ChatGPT is. But it does say this contains a critical SQL injection vulnerability. Well, hopefully it didn't learn that by reading the title. But it's saying the vulnerability breakdown right here, we have a post request, first name, we have some SQL, the user input is directed directly into the query without sanitization or escaping. Okay, so again, it looks like it's telling you to use prepared statements. Okay, so it's actually giving you better prepared statements with parameter binding completely eliminate SQL injection risk. Yes, this is almost exclusively true. So this is a better solution than it was giving for the cross-site scripting option. So this is solid. It detected some cross-site scripting in this code. Let's go to level six. We have SQL injection again. Looks like the same setup where number equals number. Let's see, result equals query, con, query, con, refers to the connection up here, which is the database, query over here. Let's actually just run this through ChatGPT and see how it analyzes it rather than sitting here and trying to evaluate the differences between one and six. The new snippet is also classic SQL injection, of course. User input is directly into the query without sanitization or parameterization. So right here we have this number, number comes from here, input type equals text. It's a get request this time. Get, okay, so the first one was a post, this one is a get, interesting number equals get number. So we're getting the number from the request. And then we are passing it through this query string, which is being produced. It looks like the same way. The result is equal to the query using this query function, which is touching the database and passing through the query. Row is equal to MySQL num rows. I'm not exactly familiar with this does right here. 
number. I, is this perhaps result is the result of the query right now? So it's echoing an, a tag. It's saying there is a book found. Oh, I see. So in, in this particular case right here, the data is not actually being sent back to the user. So the PHP executes on the server. And um, after execution, it's sending one of two potential options back to the server. Either is there is no book right here, um, or there, there is a book or there is no book. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't modify the database in any way. So right here it's saying, an attacker can manipulate the input to perform unauthorized SQL queries, so one equals one. Okay, you know, where number equals this, I imagine you could also escape out of this somehow, and you could just write whatever query you wanted to. And so you could say, you know, where number equals true and or, or subquery. So it's identified that this is SQL injection once again. It's telling you to use prepared statements once again. It's telling you to clean up your form action. Let's see what was wrong with the form action. So we have the form action over here. PHP server self. Oh, interesting. So the form action right here is actually being generated on the server side. It was generated here too. Is there any implication to that? Form action, I believe that's going to be the endpoint where this information is sent to. And it's suggesting not to use this. I imagine that this is some type of environment variable. Not entirely sure. It's not referenced anywhere else here. So that actually might not be a problem. Can't say for certain, not a PHP expert. Admin passwords in the secret table. Oh yeah, that's a good point. It looks like in the HTML code, there has there is a hint which is gonna be rendered on the client to where to find the admin password. So perhaps root does not have the most permissions for this database and perhaps admin does, or perhaps it's a server admin. And yes, the if you knew that there was an admin account, probably with the name admin or lowercase admin, and you knew that there was a secret table, you could query that and you could get further information. And it, it gives some suggestions right here. It actually gives a nice table at the end. So it's saying use um, parameter binding and prepared statements. This is also called uh, just parameterized queries. Improper form action, escape this. Not an expert, can't tell you what this is. Maybe ChatGPT found something I don't know. Uh, do not intend to become an expert on PHP anytime soon. Use HTML special characters if showing book info. Okay, so when we show the book info, we are not showing book info as far as I can see, unless it's embedded somewhere up here. Yeah, I'm not seeing it. I'm just seeing two lines being echoed into the HTML. One is this pre-tag with no book and the, with book found, and the other is pre-tag with not found. So. It did identify that it was, in fact, uh, another SQL injection. It says command execution, number one. So we have an HTML page. Right here, we have another form. The form says login as admin. It asks for a username. It asks for a password, the, both in actually plain text. Um, they are submitted to form action command exec onephp which is the same file. So it goes over here. It says get username echo shell oh okay here's the vulnerability so this is command execution because in the html form whatever is passed through as the username is passed through as a shell command which means you can just run any shell command if your username happens to be a shell command so we can try that let's try that and let's remove command exec one out of here let's actually just like do a quick find and replace right here of command exec one and one of these buttons over here is replace. Let's see, files to include, exclude. There we go. Command exec one with, uh, let's just call it PHP one. That way, ChatGPT doesn't have as much context as previously. I have another file for you to evaluate at GPT. Ready when you are, send over the file and I'll analyze it for security vulnerabilities right away. So there's the file with the command injection. Whoa, this code snippet has multiple critical security issues, especially around command injection and authentication. So he's saying command injection right here, we've got this username, comes through the get request, comes as a query parameter. There's a shell execution right here. You're directly passing user input to shell exec without any sanitization or validation. This allows an attacker to run arbitrary shell commands on your server. That is in fact true. So uh, yeah, that's great. Good work, ChatGPT. Example attack input ls will display like your file structure and then it has some information here. So ls-l. So that would return the directory listing. That looks correct to me. 
Yeah, one of the most severe uh, vulnerabilities possible. That is absolutely true. And uh, weak authentication logic. So I didn't even read the authentication logic. If username is equal to admin and password is equal to this. <laughs> Echo, well done. Okay. Um, yeah, no, that's uh, that's actually a good call out from ChatGPT. This is very, very primitive um, and doesn't it doesn't really include any best practices. Uh, I mean, it's got a hard-coded password here. It's in plain text. Username check right here. It's just, let's see, admin and password. And this is actually just coming from the query, which means it's also going to be stored in browser history and logged your ISP and so on and so forth. Interesting. Um, yeah, so weak authentication logic. Good job. Hack GPT. Password's hard-coded, seen in play text. It got that. No session management, no brute force protection. Yeah, no rate limits or anything. Also, the logic is after the command injection, so an attacker can trigger commands regardless of login success. Oh, interesting. That is a good point as well. The logic of this should, you know, probably be in reverse. Let's see. Echo shell exec get username. I mean, I don't think this was in. I don't think this was intended to be a, a functionality here. I think this is just there to demonstrate command execution. Um, incorrect form method. It's saying it's a get. The form will default to get. Okay, so it's a form attribute should be get lowercase. And where is that form attribute? So it's saying form align center method get dollar sign get. I don't know what this does in PHP. Um, you know, it could be replaced with something. But uh, you know, this type of request should ever be done over a get anyway, because uh, when you're doing a get request, you're exposing all the data in the URL. So you know, ChatGPT. I, I think it missed. If I were to kind of like summarize this whole string, it looks like we we went through quite a bit right here. We went through. XSS number one in the final XSS SQL and one in the final and now we've done some command execution with removing some of the data that would just give away hints to ChatGPT. It appears as if ChatGPT or in our case HackGPT is capable of finding basic security vulnerabilities in your application source code. So that's great. I actually tried this about a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago on ChatGPT and it couldn't find anything at all. Um, and I think that that really shows that the intelligence or the pattern matching or, you know, however this uh, particular large language model is coming up with these vulnerabilities in the source code has really improved. And, you know, I, I definitely wouldn't replace a professional security engineer with this. I think, you know, ultimately what it's doing is finding like really low hanging fruit. This is, you know, not of the complexity you would find in a production application. Most of these are 33 lines. I think one was like 58 lines of code. So I'm not sure what the context window is. I do know that these break down on larger code bases. But if you're just learning, you want to learn some information security, some application security, you've got some applications you want to test, it seems like ChatGPT might be able to help you out. Now, where ChatGPT was able to identify these vulnerabilities pretty quickly, as you can see with the command execution, as you can see up here with the SQL injection, uh, it was not very good with the exception of SQL injection, which is kind of like well-known standardized methods of mitigation. It was not very good at coming up with best practice mitigations. We saw an example of that when we were looking at cross-site scripting and it was just telling us to do HTML entity encoding. There is much better first line mitigations for these types of vulnerabilities. Like I mentioned, uh, one of them would be for, in the case of cross-site scripting, would be to do a content security policy, a, PA, uh, a CSP, and then you start blocking a lot of this script execution throughout your entire website and getting the benefits of that content security policy. Another thing is not to assume that just through entity encoding alone, you're going to be able to secure your uh, user interface. I mean, there are libraries upon libraries that do this very masterfully with, you know, security researchers who have spent sometimes have PhDs on this out there. You might want to use a sanitization library like I recommend at Cure53's Dom Purify, which is what Google Search uses, rather than trying to implement all of your own sanitization, so on and so forth. But uh, you know, I, I think I'd conclude by saying I'm impressed. This ChatGPT's ability to analyze source code has improved dramatically in the last two years. And if I was a younger person in college and I was trying to learn information security, in particular application security, you know, maybe I'd recommend to them so it's shameless self-promotion, go buy my book, read it start to finish. It has a lot more in-depth mitigations for this type of vulnerabilities. But beyond that, you could probably just start working on some applications building your own applications, talking to ChatGPT, and you could probably get some fundamental knowledge out of ChatGPT, which would be really useful. So that's a positive in my book. Well done, HackGPT. You're getting better. And I think that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.